Good afternoon folks, Mechanic Dave here. Uh, today I'm working on a 2008 Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 4.3, I believe so. Anyhow, uh, had to do the damn heater core on this uh, vehicle for a customer. And uh, it's not as bad as I would expect it to be. I'll, I'll tell you the one that I, I dreaded was the Dodge Nitro and that really sucked ass. But anyway, let me give you a little rundown on what it consists of. It comes out in three stages. Be prepared first and foremost to disconnect the battery. Uh, drain the HVAC system of Freon. Remember, it's only illegal if you knowingly, knowingly vent it into the atmosphere. <laughs> but contain it into bottles, like I did. Um, <clears throat> so first off, let me flip this camera. I ended this, uh, the dash. So there's gonna be little screws on the ends. You know, they were really smart about it. They cut little slots out so you can run a, an extension with a 10 millimeter. Uh, these are seven millimeter little bitty screws. A uh, little bitty screw here, here, uh, there, 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 and there. And if you look at the top of the dash, there's tabs there at the top. So what you're going to do is remove and it, this top piece up here. It just pries up. It's only held down by little clips. <clears throat> Once you get that, you're going to have 10 millimeters. 10, 10, 10, 10. Then you're going to have your little <coughs> speaker tweeter systems, if you will. There's going to be a little uh, photo sensor up there for... Uh, for lighting and so forth. Uh, the steering column does not need to come out, thank Jesus. Uh, the wiring harness is held in by little seven millimeter screws in various points. This thing came apart pretty fucking easy. I mean, pretty easy. Um, there's gonna be, obviously you gotta remove the cluster. Uh, wiring harness goes through there. I disconnected the computer down here I didn't really need to do this one apparently but the other one's chilling on the driver's seat now so you're gonna have to move that out of the way then the second stage will be this cluster here which it's held in by 10 millimeter there 10 mil 10 mil um, 10 mil 10 mil the shifter assembly has to come out, which it's just these three suckers. That one's held in by a clip. You pull that clip up, push it out. This one just kind of undo the, undo it from the swedge, like pull it out. This one just pops off. Same with this guy here. Don't mess with that screw. It's fine. Just pop it off. Now, another fella, when it came to the Okay, let me backtrack before I go that far. Now this assembly here, <clears throat> the way you gotta do it is drain the HVAC system from the engine bay area, obviously. It's got two 13 millimeter bolts, nuts that come off. The heater, the heater core hose lines are impossible to get in the engine bay. Another fella on here, I think his name was Link something or another, he had a video. I used his video on how to remove the heater core. He was very helpful, thank you very much. However, he fought those, those hoses and he said that was the hardest part of the job and I can believe it because there's no room. So here's what I did to make life a little easier. So follow those hoses. They're held in by two clips right there on the valve cover. Follow those two. They're held on by two clips here undo the two heater hoses that connect to the water pump housing area right there top and bottom see those little nipples down there <clears throat> they're just uh they're like little tension hose clamps they're the factory ones be sure to check to make sure those don't leak when you put them back on they always lose tension after you've sque uh, squeezed them so once you remove those and you cut the you pull the hoses out of their little uh hold downs then you can just feed those hoses in through the cab at which point <coughs> you can start to pull this whole monstrosity towards you. Then you pull the heater hose lines in a little bit and then bam, you got enough wiggle room to get them out. 
and there's the finished product. Be very careful when you go to do, put the new ones on, uh, put some sort of silicone around them when you slide the hose on because uh, if you put any kind of tension on these, like with pliers or whatever, look at that. I didn't even put much tension. These are, this is the old one. They're made of brass, uh, so it just squeezes and bends really easy. So if you don't have a, a good, true, round, circular shape to match the hoses, you're going to have a leak after you throw this sucker all together. So my heater core was leaking right down in there. And you know what? This leads me to believe, I don't know. I, I believe it all has to do with the mixture of your coolant. If it gets too acidic, they're just, they're cranked out of a factory in China at a speed, you know, which quality over, quantity over quality is what's happening nowadays. So hard to say, <clears throat> but all that I have to do now is undo that one Phillips head that Phillips head there and then the whole sucker comes out and stick it in reverse order um, if you guys have any questions at all this was this is going to be a piece of cake compared to the Dodge Nitro I did have a be careful with this box here this this goes right there above the heater or above the blower it's got two tabs on the back I did happen to break one off I'm hoping that I'll be all right with just the one. We'll find out. I might have to MacGyver something and God knows what, but that's the least of my worries right now. So, yeah, this is your finished product. It looks like a pile of trash or a <laughs> finished product once you get to the heater core. So, well, thanks, guys. Subscribe. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I don't think that you'll need anything crazy for this job. You needed a seven millimeter socket. Um, shorty perhaps would be the best. Um, on the steering column, there's two bolts that you'll need a torque bit and it's a, a T20, T20 torque bit for the very top cover that goes over the steering column. On the bottom, it's held on by two Phillips heads the inst the instrument cluster is only held in by four Phillips heads. Then the whole thing comes out. <clears throat> just do a fa do yourself a favor and just mark things that you're unsure of when you get to a point like like this wire. I put airbag. I I mean they all blend in after a while. And then I like to keep wires pretty close to where they originally came out because you could easily sling this over there and get confused as to where it originally belonged. So, but when you do this for a living. Things kind of make sense, and I had never done this particular Jeep heater core before, so needless to say, I was super pleased with how well Jeep did this. Um, I'm not a big Jeep fan. Um, I'm definitely not a Dodge fan, but I'll definitely do a Jeep heater over a Dodge heater. <laughs> so take care, folks. Uh, have a good one.